Good morning, dear esteemed members of this webinar. I am Vineet Matthew, the host for this event. Thank you so much for your passion and enthusiasm in joining us this morning. As we are all aware, the whole world is traversing a path never traveled before. We are fighting an unprecedented global pandemic caused by SARS-CoV-2, popularly known as COVID-19 or coronavirus. It is in this scenario that Agape Diagnostics Limited is presenting to you this webinar titled COVID-19 Diagnosis and Role of C-Reactive Protein with the latest updates in diagnosis panels to evaluate the suspected confirmed cases of COVID-19 and the role of CRP in therapeutic monitoring in COVID-19 patients. The resource person for this webinar is Dr. D.M. Vasudevan, MBBS, MD, FAMS, FRC PAD. He is the technical director of Agape Diagnostics Limited. Words are not enough to describe his academic and professional credentials. Dr. Vasudevan was the principal of Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences, Kochi, for six years before which he was the Dean of Medical College at Gangtok, Sikkim. He holds MD in Biochemistry from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi, after completion of which he did his postdoctoral research at Swiss Cancer Research Institute in Switzerland for three years. He is a fellow of Royal College of Pathologists from London. Dr. Vasudevan, received the prestigious B.C. Roy Award for eminent medical teacher from the President of India, Dr. Shankar Dayal Sharma. He is a fellow of National Academy of Medical Sciences. He was the president of the Association of Clinical Biochemists of India during the year 2010. Dr. Vasudevan has over 50 years of teaching and research experience in various medical colleges. He had worked in medical colleges of Calicut, Trivandrum, Kottayam, Trichur, Mangalore, Manipal, Gangtok, Sikkim, and Kochi. He is the author of Textbook of Biochemistry for Medical Students, now in its ninth edition, and which is widely used in all medical colleges in India and abroad. More than five lakh copies of the book have been sold. The Spanish and Russian editions of the book have recently been published. He is also the author of another four textbooks in biochemistry. He has published more than 240 papers in national and international journals. Some of them were cited in standard textbooks. Further, he has presented more than 200 papers in national and international conferences in and outside India. He has already guided 35 PhD students. With great honor, let me welcome Dr. Vasudevan to the session. Before I hand over to Dr. Vasudevan, a quick note for the attention of all the participating members. During the course of this webinar, your voice will be muted. Any questions that you might have could be posted in the comment box, which is located at the right hand side of your screen at the end of the session. Dr. Vasudevan will answer them live. Over to Dr. Vasudevan for his insightful presentation. Thank you and welcome you, sir. Thank you very much for the nice introduction. Good morning to all the attendees. I am very glad to present today's webinar on COVID-19. The whole world is reeling under this pandemic. And therefore, it is necessary for us to have an idea of what is happening. Today, we are more importantly, we will be taking care of uh, the diagnostic features of COVID. And the today's topic will be covered something like this. Initially, we will be telling about something on the COVID-19 and the virus, then go to symptoms of the COVID-19 
that is the understanding of the epidemiology will also be dealt and then we go in a little more greater detail on the diagnosis the tools of the detection as well as the details of some of the clinical laboratory estimations of the virus and then finally we go to the cytokine storm and the importance of crp to in the clinical condition Let us uh, go in a little about the coronavirus. The COVID-19, that is COVID, is that coronavirus disease, that is the epidemic is 19, 2019, that is the name is like that. It is uh, due to the vi a particular virus. The virus is named as SARS, COV-2, that is Previously, a few years back, we had the SARS infection, and this is a mutated variety of the same virus, and that is why it is called number two, the SARS-CoV-2. This is originated in Wuhan, China, in the uh, end of November and early December 2019. The coronavirus is in a constitute the subfamily Orthocoronaviridae and the family of Coronaviridae and the order Nidovirials of Riboviria. If you feel that these are too much, then you just forget these particular names and just remember that they are enveloped viruses with single stranded DNA genome and a nucleocapsid. That is important to remember that this is an RNA virus, and single-stranded RNA virus, and the virus has a coat of uh, um, proteins. And the virus as such, they have a characteristic club-shaped spikes that project from their surface, which in electron micrographs create an image reminiscent of the solar corona from which this particular name is derived. This, regarding the structure of the virus, the average diameter of the virus particle is around 120 nanometer. And inside the envelope, there is the nucleocapsid, which is formed from the multiple copies of nucleocapsid and protein. We will be discussing this in protein later on, that this, this is a particular important protein that is present there as a, a specific protein for this particular virus, that N protein and that, that is bound to the single-stranded RNA genome. That which will be sufficient for the, uh, the virus. Now we go for the symptoms of the disease. Regarding the people, the disease can spread from person to person through small drop, droplets from nose or mouth when the infected person coughs or exhales. That is why we are always telling that it is absolutely necessary to keep the social distance. And this is the reason. And then how it is transmitted is given in the, the other part. These small droplets land on surfaces, which means any person that touches these surfaces and then their eyes, nose, and mouth can become infected. And therefore, it is absolutely necessary to keep distance from person to person. A more important point to remember at the moment is that there are asymptomatic persons. Many persons infected with COVID-19 show mild symptoms, especially during the first stage of the disease. Thus, you can still catch the disease from an infected person who only has a mere cough and does not feel ill. That is very important in the present scenario because out of all persons that is infected by the virus, about 60% of the people are remaining unsymptomatic. You, you don't know who, who is infected, but at the same time, these asymptomatic people are infective. They can infect the virus to others. Therefore, this is a very important point to keep in mind. Then the symptoms of, uh, of the disease include tiredness, high fever, dry cough, and of course, in the later stages, that when the disease goes in the bad shape, then there will be difficulty in breathing because at that moment, the person will have pneumonia type of uh, difficulties. 
and breathing will be difficult. The most common symptoms are shown in the upper part, that is fever 88%, dry cough 68%, and fatigue 38%. There are many uncommon symptoms that is given here, but in the lower end, the lo lower end of left side that you can see that uh, the, there will be vomiting, diarrhea, etc. that these are the gastrointestinal diseases. Usually the symptoms of the, uh, of the coronavirus is the lung in upper and lower respiratory tract. But in certain persons, about 5 to 30 percent of the persons, there will be some amount of the gastrointestinal tract symptoms also. Of course, in the right hand side, it is given severe diseases that, can, that there will be CNS, there will be difficulty in the, in the lungs, there will be pneumonia-like symptoms, and there will be in the disease, decreased white blood cells, kidney failure, high fever, all these things will be there. Now, what to do if you have symptoms? If you have symptoms or have been in an infected area, that is, there is some suspicion, then call the designated phone number for your region, you will be given a home test over the phone and the, you wait or quarantine yourself, protect others by wearing gloves and mask, support the break the chain, the chain campaign. Then finally, follow the instructions provided by the doctor and national and local health authorities and paramedicals. Since antibiotics do not work against this coronavirus, preventive measures are very important. And preventive measures are, all of us know now, because all the press and TV, everything will be giving all these details. But just to quickly go through, that most important is wash your hands with alcohol-based sanitizer or with the soap and water. As I had already told that keep a distance of at least one meter between yourself and anyone who coughs or sneezes. And the third one is try your best not to touch your eyes, your nose and at your mouth. This is an important point. It is statistically speaking, it is shown that every one of us will touch our nose or mouth about 60 times per day. That is a common practice of the human beings. But at, this, at the same time, as I have pre previously told, that the transmission is taking place because of this particular. And therefore, that should be carefully noted. And then cover your mouth and your nose with your bent elbow or tissue when coughing. Seek medical attention if you have difficulty in breathing and high fever. And of course, follow the directions of your national and local health authorities. So, who are the suspects? These are the patients with acute respiratory illness, patient with epidemiological history, patient with respiratory illness, and patient with no alternative diagnosis that fully explains the clinical signs and symptoms. Screening is important, and the screening has uh, two facts, that is, one is epidemiological history and the clinical manifestations. Regarding the epidemiological history, within the last 14 days of symptom onset, the patient has a travel history or residence in a location with a community transmission or contact with the probable or confirmed cases. And if uh, the covert clinical manifestation is come, then that I had already described that there will be a respiratory illness characterized by fever and respiratory signs and symptoms such as cough and shortness of breath. And now we go to the diagnostic features, how to detect the, the infection as well as the details of the laboratory technology. There is currently no cure, and in the absence of either proven effective therapy or a vaccine, diagnostic testing becomes a valuable tool. Now, 
In the left hand side picture is shown that the virus is, inter is introduced into the body, that infection is there. The most important point to remember that out, let us say 100 persons are infected, only 40 percent will have the overt disease. The other 60 percent will not have any clinical manifestations, but at the same time they are carriers and therefore they can infect others. The overt disease that can be of two types, most of them, almost all of them, 98 percent of them will be recovered. About one to two percent will have aggressive disease and go to death. In the right hand side, we have shown that there are so, different clinical tests. And these tests I shall describe in greater detail after some time. And these tests are necessary or useful for the epidemiological surveillance, for the initial diagnosis, for staging of the disease, for prognostication, for therapeutic monitoring. And also later after the recovery period, there can be again necessary for the epidemiologic surveillance. So, uh, an important point to remember is that we have to take the, the specimen very correctly. In the, if the person is infected today, within the next seven days, there will be rapid multiplication of this virus in the upper respiratory tract. Therefore, at this period, that is the initial one week, we have to take the nasal or thro throat swabs, nasopharyngeal swabs. This is absolutely important. How to take the specimen is important point that uh, the paraclinic, uh, paramedicals should be aware of how to take the correct, uh, correct way of taking the nasal swabs. Then the uh, swab is taken and it is transported through the universal transport when one number of transport medium is used and that is kept at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade that is ice should be there and in this way we can keep only 72 hours maximum if you want to keep this specimen more than that we have to keep it minus 80 or something like that therefore the specimen collection as well as transportation is absolutely necessary most of the uh, the negative results, false negative results will come because of that, that the swab is taken not in the, in the correct area or because that the transportation is not correct. This is a very important point to remember. Even though you do all the tests and get a negative result, that does not, that means that something, something may be wrong in your specimen collection and transportation. Now that uh, chart is giving the Positivity that if you take bronchial alveolar, alveolar lavish, that 93% will be positive. And nasal swabs usually of only 63% positive. This is because the either the throat, the specimen is not correctly taken or because the transportation is not correct. And therefore, it is absolutely necessary to keep these things. Now I want to show, but the last last uh, uh, way that there is blood, you can see that it is only 1% positivity. That means blood is uh, not useful for the uh, testing in the in, in, the, in, 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 in the nucleic acid testing, the virus virus testing as such. Of course, blood can be taken, but is utilized for the testing of the antibody test, which I shall describe in greater detail. Uh, therefore, this is, uh, moreover, in the initial phase, the initial first uh, one week of the disease, the upper respiratory tract is infected, and therefore, nasopharyngeal swabs are useful at that time. And the second uh, part of the disease, second, uh, that is, second week of the disease, there will be the, the, in, the <coughs> infection will be more in the lower respiratory tract. And therefore, at that time, bronchoalveolar lavage fluid will be more useful. But at the same time, the, the lavage fluid is difficult to, to take. It needs uh, hospital administration, uh, admission, etc. Then we take the diagnos diagnosis of COVID-19. That this can be divided into two major headings. One is the molecular testing. Second is the serological testing. The molecular testing can either be A, the real-time reverse transcriptive PCR, and B, the LAMP testing. 
The serological testing will, can be the antibody testing that is IgG and IgM and B, the antigen testing. I shall go into greater detail of each one of them. First, we go for the reverse transcriptase PCR test. That is the most commonly done test at the moment in India. This is what we call as that the testing, the patient is tested in such and such a center and we get a positivity, etc. That so much number of persons has been got a positivity, etc. We can see each day in the daily papers. And this is the most common test that we are doing at the moment in India. That is the RT-PCR. RT means that there is reverse transcription. Now, what is that means? That the virus is an RNA. And therefore, that RNA has to be first extracted. So swab is taken, and that uh, a virus will be there. That virus has to be extracted. That RNA has to be extracted first. That that needs some chemicals, etc., some kits, etc. And from that, the RNA is, is taken. That RNA has to be converted to DNA. That is what we call as reverse transcriptase. The, uh, the RNA to DNA, that conversion is called a reverse transcription. And that enzyme is called a reverse transcriptase. With that help of that enzyme, we convert the RNA to DNA. And this DNA is multiplied to million times. About, and that, that test is called PCR. The full, full, full form of PCR is polymerase chain reaction. That is, the polymerase is the enzyme. That there is a chain reaction. That is, the DNA is first made into single stranded DNA. Then that has to be made in, into uh, further, further new DNA is synthesized. This is something like a, a paper, a, a draft is there. And for, from that, we take copies by Xerox, yes, and hundreds of copies are taken by the Xerox machine. This is something like that. DNA is made into many, many copies, and that copy, a million time copies are taken. That is what we call as PCR. Of course, that needs PCR machine is required because that this particular technique needs different types of uh, uh, temperature. First, we have to keep it 95 degrees centigrade for one minute. Then we have to take it 72 degrees centigrade for one minute. Then again, about 86 degrees centigrade for one minute, like that. That there will be uh, the changes of the uh, timing, uh, changes of the temperature. And that is why it is called cycle. That it's a temp cycler, temperature cycler is the machine is called. That machine is necessary. And therefore, you can see that there is a lot of work that has to be done for this RT-PCR. Even though with the RT-PCR, just five, five letters are given, that will take at least three to five hours to do the whole work. It is a very time-consuming and person-consuming. When here, the genetic material from the sample is copied. And then the copied means the RNA is copied to DNA. And then that DNA is come back to the genetic sequence of the original virus. That is the basic principle. And most of these tests can take anywhere from a few hours. Usually three to five hours it will take. Nowadays, rapid diagnostic tests are, uh, has been uh, come into the, it is not coming into the Indian market. It is uh, available in certain uh, America, etc. But anyway, that uh, let us forget about uh, this rapid test at the moment. The, this is the basic minimum that we have to do. That is the common test that we are doing, that a nucleic acid test that we generally take, that will take time consuming, as well as uh, that takes a lot of instruments, a lot of capital investment. So the PCR test can confirm a diagnosis of COVID-19 if it identifies two species, specific viral genes. If it identifies only one gene, then it will produce an inconclusive result. And the targets include envelope E gene and the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase gene. These are the two genes that is tested here. And if both of them are positive, then we say that the test is positive. Now, they, there, there can be three 
uh, test results that is positive test. That means that the patient is positive. There is no difficulty in that. Then it can be a negative result. A negative result means that the patient, the, see, either you are patient, sample uh, uh, taking and transportation may be uh, wrong, or there may be something wrong in going in the uh, actual testing, etc. We don't know. Therefore, a negative test does not rule out a, a positivity of the patient. And then there will be an intermediary test. We don't know the inconclusive test. An inconclusive test also should be taken as uh, something like the treated as something like a positive thing. Now, PCR tests can be very labor intensive as well as capital intensive with severe several stages at which a rest may occur between the sampling and analysis. Therefore, the false negatives can occur up to 20%, meaning that they are more useful for confirming the disease. If the disease, if the, the test is positive, that means infection is the certain. But a negative result will not rule out the thing. That is what I want to emphasize at this moment. There is only 80% specificity, even in very good labs. And therefore, there are many areas where there can be false positivity can come. Now I go to the second type of uh, uh, nucleic acid test. That is uh, the Chitra gene lamp. This is a, a reverse transcription loop mediated isothermal amplification. That is the lamp. Lamp, it is uh, the its uh, full form is loop mediated isothermal amplification. Why it is isothermal? Because in the previous day, or the usual PCR, which is most commonly done in India at the moment. All the PCR tests, there are three different types of temperature. And the, 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 there is a cycler is required. And a particular instrument is also required for that a different temperature can be kept at a particular timing. And in the, in the new technology, the new technology has been brought about by the Chitra, the, the Sri Chitra Thirunwal Institute of Medical Sciences. And the, they have developed this particular technique. The lamp technology carries the reaction at the constant temperature. That means that particular instrument is not required here. It is very simple, more economical, quicker. And confirmatory diagnostic test for the particular N gene. I, I had in the very previous stage, I have told the N gene that N gene of the virus is detected. And the gene itself, two areas of the gene is detected, and therefore 100% accuracy is shown in this particular instrument and this particular method. The great advantage is that this particular method, within 10 minutes, the gene detection is possible. And of course, the, that there should be the, ident uh, the isolation of the, uh, of the gene, etc., is required. Therefore, some uh, total time of the, of the test will be less than two hours. Therefore, that is a great advantage, less, less time and great, more accuracy and more economical, lesser time and the, the equipment is also, a requirement will be also less. The method, the procedure of this lamp technology is that the RNA is extracted. And then the, we add the reverse transcriptase enzyme, which will convert the virus RNA into a seed copy DNA, cDNA. And then we, do, we add the chemicals for the, uh, for the reactions. That is the lamp te uh, technology is done. That will take only a few minutes only. And in the, as I have told that the N gene and the two regions of that will be tested. And to that you add a particular dye and that dye will, uh, absorb, will be taken up by the, by the DNA, and that there will be fluorescence. That if there is the, the, the virus is originally present there, there will be more fluorescence. And therefore, the quantitation is also possible here. And of course, here also there will be three types of, uh, of results, negative, intermediate, and positive. Positive will be correct. That, that is positive, the patient is... Uh, uh, having the disease. Intermediate and negative will not rule out the disease. But at the same time, that there will be more positivity in this particular case. 
in the right hand side that particular equipment for this uh, uh, fluorescence diagnosis will be there and uh, this is uh, uh, introduced by the sri tirathirunal institute that is you know, it is uh, that partnered with agape diagnostic that this is uh, you now ready for marketing and we will be within one week this will be ready for marketing the particular technique has already been okayed by the icmr and therefore there is no technical problem for the marketing in the pcr technology the reaction is carried out with a series of alternate in temperature steps or cycles which i had already described whereas in the lamp the amplification is carried out at a constant temperature and does not require the thermal cycler and therefore the technique is very simple very easy and type, less type, time consuming and the the particular instruments are also very less in this particular case that these are the advantages now the uh, nu nucleic acid tests are over now coming to the serological tests now you you must have heard in the in the uh, press common press that there will be the, the quick diagnosis is etc that this quick diagnosis is the serological test that this can identify the infection uh, and after the, the the patient is recovered the antibodies are generated after a week or two by this time the virus should have cleared from the system now the two points i want to emphasize at this moment one is that the serological tests are done in the blood whereas in the nucleic acid tests are done in the, in the swabs uh, swabs are taken from the throat etc that is the main difference secondly <laughs> serological tests <coughs> will take only 15 minutes or 20 minutes or something like that there that is why they are called a rapid test or quick test and but at the same time there is a difficulty please remember that the serological test will be positive only after two, two weeks or one week or 10 days or 15 days after the infection that means the initial phase of the infection we cannot detect by the serological test <coughs> sorry it is not yet clear how long the immunity period after the covid 15 infection will turn out to be people who survived the 2003 sudden acute respiratory syndrome that is the original sars outbreak and antibodies in their blood for years after recovery reports also indicate that some people have been infected with the virus twice over meaning that these particular patients did not develop any immunity at all that is an assumption we don't know see infected the virus means that uh, see the one person has infected he got a positive test and then he got a negative test and then after some time he get a positive test again that is what we call reinfection but we don't know the first infection correctly that it is it is positive second infection it is negative we don't know if it is a false positive or false negative etc therefore we this is the early phases of the of the topic of the of this particular infection therefore we don't know what exactly happening but at the same time in the <coughs> that there will be some antibodies are produced and these antibodies to a certain to many persons at least that these are useful antibodies that they will protect the the person from second infection but in some persons that it is not taking place now the antibodies are two types the antibodies are called immunoglobulins immunoglobulins are many types of course it is prominently these are igm ig means immunoglobulin immunoglobulin m and immunoglobulin g these are the two different types of antibodies whenever any infection is taking place after one let us say one week or something like that igm antibodies are the first type that is coming coming up and then after a few more days that the igg antibodies are coming and therefore the presence of igm antibodies indicate the recent exposure that immediately within one week he has an infection that is what igm antibodies 
And while the presence of IgG antibodies indicate the later stage infection, that usually by IgG antibody has already come. By that time, the patient must have been cleared all the virus, and he must have been already, you know, uh, all the disease manifestation will be also over. IgG antibodies against either the nucleocapsid or the spike protein or both. These are, have, these are detected, all these are detected. And antibodies against the receptor binding domain of the spike protein are considered the main targets of virus neutralizing antibodies. The neutralizing antibodies are the so-called effective antibodies. That means these antibodies will neutralize or remove the viruses from the circulation. Therefore, that is the protective antibodies. They are the antibodies useful to the body. And these antibodies, the IgG antibodies, this particular antibodies, we can detect. Now, the, <clears throat> this is the COVID-19 IgG, IgG antibody test. Please remember that we agape as these particular kits are now available to be marketed. And within one week, this will be available in the market. Here, the simultaneous detection of IgM and IgG antibodies to COVID virus in human serum, plasma, or whole blood samples are available. The advantage is that within 10 to 15 minutes, the result will be available. And that is why we say that this is the quick result or the rapid result, a rapid test. Now, we can say that uh, the uh, the, uh, the strips are there, that uh, blotting paper like strips are there. And the uppermost area, we put the blood sample or plasma or serum. And then add the reagent. Reagent will be available in the kit. And then that will be absorbed. And after some time, that there will be all the necessary IgG, the anti-IgG antibodies, etc. will be already there in that particular sheet. In the, and that uh, um, uh, blotting paper. And therefore, after 15 minutes, you will get such a result. You can see in the upper part of the, of the, of the picture that in the left-hand side, upper, upper part, left-hand side, you can see the negative result. That is all, always will be there, that there is a control, negative control will be given, and that control should be positive in all the tests. And then on the right-hand side after that, there is a, of course, negative result is there, and then there is one positive line that is the so-called IgG. IgG is positive. That is immunoglobulin G is positive. There, that means that there is in late infection. Infection is already there for the last 20, 20 days or something like that. And then the next uh, uh, strip is that there is, it is the IgM variety antibodies. That means that there is the comparatively new infection that within seven days of the infection that this particular antibody will be present. And then the next, the last slide you can see that all the IgG as well as IgM are positive. Of course, control is also positive. Then in the lower part of the thing that you can see that there are certain IgG, IgM, IgG, et cetera, are lines are there. But at the same time, you can see that in the left-hand side, that the negative result is not there. That means that this particular that particular test results could not be interpreted. That is not a correct test. That has to be eliminated from our test. The, <clears throat> now, the, I, I, the antibody test, negative results do not rule out the infection particularly in those who have been in contact with the virus. Because as I have told that in the initial phase, in the first seven days, there will be no antibodies. <coughs> then follow-up testing with a molecular diagnostic should be considered to rule out the infection in those individuals. Therefore, this quick result or the rapid test, if it is negative, immediately that particular person has to go for the molecular diagnostic test. Now, regarding the antibody, antibody test is over. The last one is the rapid antigen testing. That is, instead of the antibody, we can test the viral protein antigens in the blood. 
uh, sim similar to the quick test that is the rapid test can be done the target antigen will bind to specific antibodies fixed to the paper strip and generate a visually detectable signal typically within 30 minutes uh, this particular test is not yet to come in india therefore this is only of theoretical importance at the moment it is available in some certain areas in abroad it is also less sensitive therefore we shall not uh, go in greater detail for this test Now, up to this point, I have told the specific tests, that is the molecular tests as well as the antibody tests, these are specific for the virus. That is, the molecular test will be specific to identify the day of the RNA of the virus, and the, the antibody tests are specific for, to detect the antibodies, that means that the, the, uh, the body has produced a certain antibodies. Now we are going a little with regard to the non-specific tests. The essential role of clinical laboratories in this pandemic extends beyond the etiological diagnosis of COVID. Biochemical monitoring of COVID patients through in vitro diagnostic tests is critical for assessing the disease severity and progression as well as monitoring of therapeutic intervention. And these are some of the ordinary laboratory tests that is useful for the uh, for for this particular, <clears throat> for example, laboratory tests, complete blood count. You can see that increased white blood cell count can be seen in bacterial or super infection. Increased neutrophil count can be there in bacterial super infection. A decreased lymphocyte count is seen in a decreased immunological response to the virus. And that is a very bad prognostic, prognostic indication. Decreased platelet count also seen in disseminated coagulopathy. That is also a worse manifestation. Similarly, LDH, lactate dehydrogenase, can be increased in pulmonary injury, and especially when there is the virus is making the pneumonia-like symptoms. And the alanine aminotransferase, aspartate aminotransferase, and total bilirubin. These are hepatic uh, markers, and these markers are usually increased in usual liver injury. These are non-specific, that means that it is not very specific for this particular virus. But at the same time, that this, uh, when these uh, parameters are increased, that means that the liver injury is taking place. Similarly, creatinine. Creatinine is increased in any kidney injury, and the virus can infect or virus kidney injury is also another manifestation of the disease and that can be detected by creatinine test. Cardiac troponin is increased when there is cardiac injury. Similarly, D-dimer is increased when there is uh, disseminated coagulopathy, and prothrombin time is increased again in uh, disseminated coagulopathy. Therefore, these are worst manifestations that can take place, that is, uh, the patient is going for in a bad condition, that means, then procalcitonin is uh, when there is bacterial super infection that is increased. C-reactive protein, I am going in greater detail later, and therefore at the moment it is it is also it is uh, seen in severe viral infection that is uh, the COVID infection. Ferritin is increased wherever there is severe inflammation, but and cytokines such as interleukin 6 etc that these are increased uh, when there is cytokine storm syndrome and therefore we shall go in greater detail of what is meant by the cytokine storm syndrome and also the importance of doing c-reactive protein test Cytochrome storm, nowadays it is the theory, the, theory, the presently accepted theory is that the, there is a dangerous overreaction of the immune system or so-called hyperinflammation in the late stages of the infection. But, and this hyper, the cytokine storm is characterized by 
increased interleukin 6, interleukin 2, interferon gamma, tumor necrosis factor alpha, ferritin, and CRP. Out of this, the first four one, IL-6, IL-2, interferon, and uh, TNF, these are commonly not done in our society, in our laboratories, because these are costly one and these are not very commonly available also. Therefore, forget about these at the moment. These are at the moment mainly as uh, uh, research uh, approaches. Whereas ferritin and CRP are available, commonly available. That is even our, <coughs> our agape has uh, marketed all these things, ferritin and CRP. Out of this, ferritin is not very useful for the uh, for the diagnosis, which I shall come into great later. Whereas CRP is very important and very useful for the prognostication of the disease. In COVID-19 test, CRP levels were positively correlated with the lung lesions and could reflect the disease severity. So many. Uh, papers have been um, published out, out you know, on this aspect that CRP level go hand in hand with the disease severity and therefore for monitoring purpose the CRP is very useful. Now, this is a graph you can see that uh, the patient the days in, the x-axis is the days in hospital and their y-axis is the severity of the disease. The, as the days is increasing, that the severity is increasing, <laughs> and you can see that there is a, a fork like appearance. That in most of the cases, let us say 90% of the 98% of the cases, that the patient is recovering slowly, but uh, after some time, that they will be completely recovered. But whereas 2% uh, of the cases, you can see that the severity of the disease is increased at a particular point. <coughs> that, that is the point that we want to identify. Wha who are the persons going for this severe disease? Who are the persons going for uh, curing? And how can we identify? There comes the importance of CRP. CRP level, you can see that it goes parallel to the severity of the disease. Not only that it is parallel, you can see that it is one or two days beforehand that the CRP level is increasing. That means the CRP is a good indicator to identify that particular patient who are going for the bad disease. And you can identify them previously, and then they can, you can give active, very active treatment for them, and that will that will be useful. This is a very useful CRP is therefore a very useful uh, laboratory test, and that is again shown here in the last two uh, bars are the CRP and IL six. Uh, the IL-6 and IL CRP are going up in the clinical condition. The key laboratory parameters for the outcome of patient with confirmed COVID. And you can see that the normals as well as the abnormal conditions and that there will be statistically very significant. But at the same time, as I have told, IL-6 is very difficult to test and not commonly available in the laboratory, whereas a CRP is commonly available. The cytokine storm may be the contributing uh, reason to the COVID death. And that is why we are very much afraid of this cytokine storm. And to detect that is important. Well, how this, uh, this is coming? What is the, the explanation for that? When any cell senses that there is something bad happening, the immediate response of the cell is to kill itself. So, for example, the virus is, is entering into the into one particular cell. That cell will immediately kill themselves. This is suicide. It commits suicide. This is because because of that there will be no further multiplication of the virus, and therefore new cells will not be uh, infected. It is a protective mechanism, so virus does not spread to other cells. But at the same time, the cytokine trigger will trigger the cell death. The cell death is happening because of the cytokines. 
But when you have Swamini cells doing the same, more, more cytokines are released into the circulation, there will be more and more cells will doing this commitment, committing the suicide. And a lot of tissue, therefore, is died. In COVID-19, that tissue is mostly the lung tissue. And therefore, people are thinking about the therapeutic op options, especially of this uh, cytochrome, cytokine. <clears throat> Naturally, cytokines will be depressed by steroids. There are well documented that steroids will suppress all the inflammatory con uh, conditions. Therefore, people thought, why not we give steroids? But the WHO has given the, the, uh, the mandate that you should not should not give steroids in these conditions because that will uh, reduce all the useful inflammatory response also. Even though there are some, uh, some clinical trials are going on steroids, we forget about at the moment. Then the most uh, recent introduction is the immunoglobin, that is the convalescent serum. That is the patient has already got COVID and then they have been recovered from that Naturally, there will be IgG antibodies, and these are protective antibodies, and therefore that can be given in such a situation. The people are trying on that. Similarly, the cytokines can be blocked. The manifestation is due to cytokine increase, and therefore why not be blocked? In the interleukin one can be blocked by Anankara, a particular drug. IL-6 can be inhibited by monoclonal antibody, tocilizumab. <coughs> And uh, the HIV virus have been tried very sometimes su successfully in the treatment of uh, of COVID. That is uh, the uh, retinavir. That is the pro uh, that works against the protease of the of the virus. Then uh, <coughs> ribavirin that will inhibit the virus polymerase and uh, the. Uh, of course, hydroxyquinone is also known to inhibit the virus entry to the new cells, and therefore that is also being tried. These are therapeutic options available at the moment. Next. Uh, this is the summary of what I have given that the biomarkers, that the C-reactive protein, which is also in the, uh, the last uh, column, you can see the associated with the severity and also the severity of the symptoms that the lung conditions. Similarly, other things are also the complete blood count, increased T dimer, etc. These are also comparatively associated with, but out of this, C-reactive protein is the best. Next. The other things you can see, LDH, ADA, these things I have been told. But uh, with regard to the ferritin, even though ferritin predicts the sepsis mortality, it is blunted with the severity in this uh, in this uh, COVID infection, and therefore it is not very useful. And uh, even though IL six and etc are useful, but these are costly. And therefore, to sum, summing up in that particular aspect, the there is a great role of the CRP test for the uh, in the COVID uh, testing. The c protein is a ring-shaped pentameric protein. Circulating concentrations rise in response to any inflammation. It is an acute phase protein. Of, acute phase protein means that any inflammation condition or any diseased condition, there will be an increase. Increase following interleukin-6 secretion by macrophages and T-cells. And c pro, uh, protein is therefore non-specific, but at the same time, it is useful for the prognostication purpose. CRP binds to phosphocholine on the damaged membranes of the cells and to extrinsic ligands expressed by many microorganisms. And therefore, and it activates therefore the complement pathway and therefore the CRP is uh, act as a first line of defense against the viruses and uh, and, pro and uh, my microbes. The C-reactive protein is found in plasma and serum. It is non-specific marker of inflammation, so does not indicate the organ or organs affected. Its measurements can be used to assess the cardiovascular risk status. The CRP is usually measured by immunoassay and ephelometric methods, which I am coming in greater detail uh, after some time. 
more recently however the identification of the importance of small chronic elevation of crp as cardiovascular risk marker is apparent healthy individuals has led to the development of highly sensitive assays commonly referred to as hscrp or high sensitive crp see the hscrp is is the marker for the cardiac uh, cardiac marker whereas a crp is a marker for inflammation general inflammation how to detect these things which we i have called about an nephrometry but before coming to nephrometry just one second each of these test how to do that calorimetry is based on the beer's law and the the intensity of the color is proportional to the colored particles here the solution should be colored but should be free of particles there should be no turbidity that is the usual calorimetry about which all of us know but in the turbidimetry we make the solution purposefully turbid that and that turbidity that due to the turbidity that there will be scattering of light and unscattered light is uh, assessed and that is it will be proportional to the turbidity and therefore it will be proportional to the protein and the next step is that immunoturbidimetry that is where the let us say we take the serum when we want only a specific antigen let us say we want to assess seroloplasmin in, in such a case we add anti seroloplasmin antibody to that and then there will be a turbidity and that turbidity will be quantitative to that particular substance and therefore the that is what we call as immunoturbidimetry the turbidimetry this is the principle that the light source that it, it passes through the light is passing through the sample cell now there will be so many uh, so so particular lights are scattered up and all other regions 180 degree that no, non scattered light are taken that is called a transmitted light that is detected and that is turbidimetry on the other hand in the nephelometry that the scattered lights you can see that the, the light is passed and that uh, light is uh, passing through, that is uh, uh, refracted to various regions and 90 degrees in uh, a region that we keep the detector and that is the what is the principle of nephelometry now the turbidimetry and nephelometry had been developed a few decades ago but nephelometry was not very popular because of the cost of the instrument instrument will cost is about 40 lakhs or something like that it cannot be affordable to ordinary laboratories whereas turbidimetry was not very popular because of lack of sensitivity although having very good specificity and therefore turbidimetry is used to determine proteins present in high concentrations while nephelometry is used to determine proteins present in very low concentrations the crp etc will come in that low concentration therefore we have to go for nephelometry next therefore we thought in the lab at the, a few years back that uh, why not we combine the nephelometry and turbidimetry in the same instrument and therefore this is the uh, the result that you can see that that light is passing through that that uh, the light is the, the un I mean, the transmitted light is detected as well as the refracted light is also detected and therefore because of that the cost of the instrument is reduced very much it is instead of 40 lakhs 1 lakh will 1 or 2 lakhs will be sufficient and that is the result you can see that this is the mispa i3 that is a cartridge based automatic specific protein analyzer this offers the freedom to detect specific proteins including crp and hscrp there are so many other parameters about uh, 25 different parameters can be tested in this uh, instrument and uh, this is the mispa i3 serum protein analyzer see the advantage is that here both the nephelometry and turbidimetry are both available and there is automatic selection that is the instrument will itself identify the protein concentration and which is best that if the low concentration of the protein is lower then that will automatically select the turbidimetry estimation there are 25 parameters can be identified and because of that cost is reduced now this is uh, with this uh, thing that uh, the in summary that i have made or the some details of the of the clinical manifestations of the disease 
and then we went a little more greater detail on the clinical laboratory testing of the specific test that is the molecular testing as well as the antibody testing and then i had gone for the non specific test that is available for the for the covid diagnosis and out of that the crp is very important for the prognostication and that these are the most important points that i had already described thank you very much oh, open for some discussion uh thank you sir for the very extensive and enlightening expert uh, views uh now we are open to questions uh, uh we have received already, uh, already received certain questions so uh, maybe we would like to pose it to you sir the first question so the first question uh, is uh, from, from akila prashant so what so would be personal we, protective equipment a laboratory person must use, must use when handling when blood handling samples of covid 19 positive patients patient. so not only positive cases any sample any blood sample that is it is a positive thing that we have to take all the precautions and these are the basic pre uh, precautions that there is no particular um, instrument or something like that these are the uh, that uh, gloves the mask these are the basic precautions that we have to take the mask has to be clear that has to be uh, removed and whenever it is removed that has to be disposed correctly that means that it has to be gone for uh, for firing and then uh, uh, take all, all the time and, and hand washing these are the basic precautions that we have to take otherwise there is no particular instrument as such the second question is can the lamp test be done on regular thermal cyclers or a new instrument is required uh, lamp test there is no particular instrument required as such there is no thermal cycler thermal cycler is not at all necessary that you take test tube add the particular reagent the the, um, the enzyme and other reagents and then after that you do the uh the asset that is that quantitation is done that quantitation is done for a particular fluorometry instrument that instrument is shown in my uh, in my slide that is that is the only a small instrument that is the only requirement all the pcr and all other things are removed that is not at all required in the lamp technology that is the great advantage of the lamp technology right Uh, so the third question is: uh, Diagnosis of COVID-19 by taking blood sample has lesser accuracy than molecular testing. Still, uh, there is a heavy emphasis on it more. Why? The advantage is that it is uh, very easy to do. It, uh, it needs only ten or fifteen minutes, and that is why it is called a rapid test. And that is the advantage. The disadvantage is that the test will not be positive in the early stages where the virus is there in the replicating phase it is for it is uh, positive it will be positive only after two weeks or something like that by the time the virus has already been eliminated by the uh, by the body all right so uh, thank you all uh, thank you dear participants for the overwhelming response to the webinar thank, thank you for all the questions and the very active participation do share your feedback on the webinar in the poll provided and that will be a great feed forward to all of us thank you all once again and wish you all a fruitful and a safe day ahead thank you thank you very much thank you very much